Hello friends, my name is Edward Francis. I'm a migration consultant for the past 17 years. With my colleagues, George Kurian and Susan Chandy, we have assisted hundreds of applicants to successfully migrate, study or work in Australia. Between us, we have a combined work experience of over 50 years. Friends, I have been coming across cases affected by PIC 4020. I can say PIC 4020 is deadly. Do not risk three years or 10 years ban by providing bogus, false, misleading information, including identity fraud. So let us see what is PIC 4020. Public interest criteria 4020 gives the authority to the minister to refuse to grant a visa if the applicant provides a bogus document or information that is false or misleading in relation to their application or if the minister is not satisfied of an applicant's identity. The criterion is particularly tough because it not only looks at the application currently in front of the case officer but can also look at the visa applications that were made in the past. The case officer then decides if any bogus document or false or misleading information was given in the current application or in those past applications sometimes regardless of whether any visa was granted. This criterion also affects skill assessments and medical examination and more. It does not matter who gave the false or misleading information or who presented the bogus document. For example, it could be a bogus certificate of a business by a previous employer or even a partly incorrect supporting statement by a family member in a partner visa application. To give you an idea of how serious it is, here are few examples of decisions which I have taken from Administrative Appeals Tribunal. In our example one, permanent residence itself is cancelled due to identity fraud. It was confirmed that the applicant left Australia on 26 July 2011 on his real identity and then he returned on 20th October 2012 with a new false identity. When it was discovered, his PR was cancelled and because it is an identity fraud, he would have a 10-year ban. In our example 2, the applicant applied for skilled nominated permanent visa and the delegate considered that the applicant supplied bogus documents. The delegate found that the applicant did not satisfy public interest criteria 4020. The application was refused because of bogus document. In our example 3, applicant provided bogus IELTS test report. He told the tribunal he paid a company in China to help him with the IELTS result. When he could not obtain the requisite scores himself, they provided a bogus test result form to him. The report was obtained because of false and misleading statements through an imposter sitting the test in the applicant's place. The tribunal also finds that the clause PIC 4020 should not be waived as there are no compelling circumstances that affect the interests of Australia. In our example 4, previous marriage was not disclosed. There was bogus, I mean misleading information, no evidence of divorce provided. The applicant did not satisfy PIC 4020. Based on these examples, please do not risk your application by providing false, bogus or misleading information including identity fraud. If you want to know more about PIC 4020 or if you believe your application is at risk of refusal due to PIC 4020 or for any visa matters, please call us or book an appointment with one of our consultants. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you.